It was one of the most unusual yet effective strategies that had taken the professional scene by storm. Gold funneling challenged the competitive meta's norms by enabling one individual to carry an entire team to victory. It was a clown fiesta that nobody saw coming in the summer of 2018. It was unlike anything the competitive world has ever seen. This episode of Off Meta will analyze the history of gold funneling from its original roots in China's solo queue to various patches that made gold funneling viable. We also look into the fundamentals of this strategy, how it worked and how to defeat it. And in the end, we will see the changes Riot undertook to defeat this phenomenon. My name is Kudo, and this is the history of gold funneling and its impact in the League of Legends competitive scene. Gold funneling is a strategy that enables one individual to carry the entire game by putting golden resources in that person's hands. This strategy combines the efforts of the jungler and mid laner. One of them would possess a carry and the other would be a support. In the early game, they would both clear the jungle and return to mid lane with a level advantage against the standard mid lane opponent. Throughout the laning phase, the carry would receive priority on all jungle camps as well as mid lane minions. The support would hold all the minions in place so when the carry returns to lane, no minions would be denied by the tower. This would produce a massive level and gold discrepancy between both opposing carries in the mid lane. So when a skirmish would occur, there would be more gold, more items, more levels, and more support to the carry that would usually result in a decisive win for the funneling team. They would snowball the rest of the game for an easy victory. The fundamental partnership between the duo is significant to the effectiveness of this strategy. The carry has to be a champion that can easily take advantage of the gold discrepancy. The funnel would help the carry achieve their mid-game power spec in a ridiculously short amount of time. They would utilize this advantage to terrorize the unprepared opposing team. The support in this duo would serve two functions. The first function is to boost the carry's ability to deal damage. Whether that's due to the champion's natural steroid or hard crack control in their toolkit, the support will always be present in an engagement to provide the carry with the most stats to achieve victory. The second function is to abate the natural weaknesses of the carry's champion by providing survivability and sustain to keep them alive as much as humanly possible. The toolkit of the support would help the carry survive whatever the enemy team throws at them, usually being hard crack control. The support would aid in their survival by providing invincible ability, health, or peel during team fights. The support must also be able to maximize their utility without gold or items. The roots of gold funneling in Summoner's Rift can be found in China's solo queue. Gold funneling was first utilized by elo boosters. It was efficient for their business because it only took two individuals to carry the team and win the game. However, this strategy remained underground until multiple patches fostered the viability of gold funneling up until the beginning of the summer season. First was patch 8.9 in the beginning of May. The patch reduced the viability of wave clearing mages by nerfing Doran's ring, lost chapter, in the tier of the goddess. This meant that the gold funneling duo wouldn't be harshly punished by mages pushing mid to deny CS when they left to farm the camps. Patch 8.10 changed the jungle. This patch removed the penalty that would reduce experience if the champion's level was higher than the camp. This patch also significantly buffed Rift Scuttler with a 1000% increase in experience. This added more experience to the jungle which buffed the gold funneling duo's ability to reach their power spikes faster. Lastly, patch 8.11 destroyed 80 carries. Negative changes to critical strike items nerfed 80 carries' ability to scale as well as hurt their early game. The decrease in the importance of the 80 carry position put much emphasis on solo lane carries to win games. The day the public was exposed to the concept of gold funneling was May 23, 2018, thanks to two Reddit posts. On our Summoner School, a post made by Redditor Neverending Hope explained the gold funneling duo Master Yi and Tarek. Master Yi and Tarek was a very popular gold funneling duo and their synergy made the strategy worthwhile. Master Yi and Tarek synergized because Tarek was able to provide Master Yi an unmatched level of utility. Master Yi was able to stun those with Tarek's dazzle. This was dangerous when Master Yi used his ultimate Highlander and was chasing enemy opponents. Not only was Yi's offensive capabilities buff, but so was his survivability thanks to Cosmic Radiance. The duo would survive any engagement thanks to the invincibility and provide Yi with another window of opportunity to obtain a kill and reset using Alpha Strike, applying more damage to enemy targets in the team fights. On the very same day as the discovery of Master Yi and Tarek was another duo. On our League of Legends, Redditor Bootberg posted a threat called Interesting Cheese Strats. It talked about a duo playing Karthus and Nunu with Nunu following Karthus around clearing the jungle and also shoving mid. Boobrook then described that the game ended in 21 minutes, with Karthus at level 17, having 364 CS and being able to kill the enemy Ezreal at 100% HP with Requiem. The community found these strats really interesting. Some dismissed it as another solo QG strategy. Until this happened in the first game of the LCK Summer Split. The first pick is so up in the air, it could have been Graze, who's been dominating solo Q and then some for a long time. Oh, there oh, it is! Oh boy, Nunu Karthus is coming right out away. on the blue side. They want
want Nunukartus. MVP has been playing it in solo queue. To me, the only reason you'd first pick the Nunu is take the Kartus. Oh, and we might have Tarik E against it. <laughs> We're getting it. It's happening. We're popping off in the first game. It's the first game of LCK 2018 summer. And we're going to get it right away. Karthus Holy gets locked crap. in. There is no secret as to what's going on now. The teams have revealed themselves. And we're going to get to see it in game number one. Bono and Tempt of BBQ and Yandu and Ian of MPP both utilized gold funneling duo laners in the first game of the 2018 LCK Summer Split. BBQ used Karthus and Nunu while MVP used Master Yi and Tarek. Both duos farmed for the first 10 minutes of the game with equal CS numbers until they decided to engage on one another in the river. And just some unspeakable ways. Speaking of unspeakable, we're gonna have our first 2v2 fight. The Tarek ultimate comes down and Bono is just gonna get demolished. Tempt is gonna go down too. Uh -oh. Even burns his flash, unfortunately. Will be ulting here, but Max is gonna survive. And now Ignar on the run. Really nowhere for him to go. Should be an easy 3 for 0 for MVP here. Maybe you only need one. Maybe Master Yi is truly the chosen one. He's got three. He's already going to do it. Red buff and Yandu going to get three kills. The game soon spiraled out of control in MVP's favor. From then on, any team fight with Master Yi in it, MVP would dominate easily. MVP's team composition provided so many assets to allow Master Yi to succeed throughout the game. Fiddlesticks and Orn helped by providing hard crack control and engage for the team fights. Lulu helped Master Yi with their ultimate and peeling power. The entire team composition revolved around supporting Master Yi and it was very effective. Here we go again, level 12 Master Yi! And the ultimate's gonna come down! Run for your lives, BBQ! You're not gonna get out of this one! A double kill for Yondu! And that's gonna do it, guys. I don't know what to say. Most of the team fights in the future are gonna look just like that. Nunu and Karthus, on the other hand, never reached their full potential, and the Requiems were non factors in this game. MVP took the win against BBQ. Here's the engage. You're not getting away from him this time. The Shen ultimate, not enough of a shield, and that's gonna do it. They lost their damage. Where even is Karthus? He disappeared. He's not even here. He's up in the top lane, and that's it. The greatest strategic region in the world, Korea, was front row to a clan fiesta that would set the theme for the remainder of the early weeks of the professional scene. The gold funneling strategy was made meta for the competitive teams to try out. And not all duos were just restricted to Yi, Tarek, or Nunu Karthus. Other champions like Kaisa or Graves or Lucian were tried as funneling carries. Despite the overpowered nature of gold funneling, there are windows of opportunity for the enemy team to capitalize on and shut down the strategy. Team composition can dictate the usefulness of the gold funneling duo. This applies to both the enemy and gold funnel team. If the opposing team sees that a gold funnel duo has been picked early in champ select, they can cater their picks towards mitigating the carry's power. This would be through picking champions that have hard crack control, significant disengage, or peel. For example, when Jin Air picked Karthus and Nunu against KT Rolster, KT selected champions that would mitigate the Requiem's damage. Karthus and Nunu's effectiveness wouldn't be felt against three tanks, one spell shield champion in Nocturne, and a Lulu. KT Rolster won that game decisively. Same goes when a gold funneling team composition picks way too many supports and therefore is reliant on the carry only. This situation occurred in Fnatic vs Misfits where Caps was on Kai'Sa and there were four supports picked around her. When Caps fell behind, Fnatic realistically had already lost the game by investing so heavily into one player. Another way to shut down the gold funneling strategy is to invade at level 1. The early game is a window of opportunity to shut down the gold funnel duo before they get too ahead and hit their power spikes early. Invading level 1 is a great way to delay the win condition for gold funneling duo as they would be set behind in farm. This occurred during BBQ vs Hanwall Life where Bono and Tempt once again played Karthus and Nunu. Hanwall Life invaded the blue buff and obtained first blood. Without an undertow, it might be difficult, done. but Tempt is going to have to flash after the second one lands. That's a flash in! The Apprehend taken level 1, and that is a Soraka grabbing first blood! Lastly, another opportunity to prevail over gold funneling is through dominance in the side lanes. Because the normal jungler would be dedicated to funneling the carry, both top and bot are theoretically vulnerable. There is no jungler on the team. This allows a window of opportunity where the enemy team can get fed off the undefended lanes. While there are strategies to defeat the gold funneling duo, Riot did not like this meta whatsoever. Design director Riot Midler said in a League of Legends forums that gold funneling is an issue we've been looking at for a little while now, given it creates lanes without much interaction and putting two income streams on one champion produces a range of balance issues. Riot attempted to first solve funneling in patch 8.13 by nerfing Master Yi, Tarek, and Nunu. While these nerfs did stop them from being picked, the concept of gold funneling wasn't affected and other teams still used other duos that remained strong like Lucian Braum. 
However, patch 8.14 was the nail in the coffin for the entire gold funneling strategy. Riot Meddler said in a forum post that Riot is going with a temporary solution as a result that's pretty ugly on the intuitiveness clarity side with the intention of replacing it come preseason when it's more appropriate to make larger changes. This ugly change would come in the form of Monster Hunter. This passive penalized junglers that had the most gold on the team. Minion kills would grant 10 less gold. This meant that the carry wouldn't be able to farm minions in lane and would only receive 4 CS when doing so. It effectively killed the ability to farm both minions and jungle camps, thus ending the ability to funnel jungle and mid gold into one carry. However, this indirectly punished carry junglers as taxing lane or holding a wave would not be worthwhile. Riot acknowledged that this would be only a temporary fix to the problem and was later removed in patch 8.23. The long-term fixes promised by Riot to prevent any gold funneling strat came in two forms. The first long-term fix was the bounty system. Both kills and minion farm would increase the bounty on a champion. That meant that any funneled carry would have a huge bounty on their heads off of the farm alone. The death of a carry would result in significant gold going to the other team. The next long-term change was turret plating. Turret plating was made to extend the laning phase but also reward lane bullies with gold for every 1000 health the turret lost. What this meant was that if the gold funnel was to go to the jungle and farm, the mid laner could push in the turret and obtain the gold from turret plating. Therefore, it would diminish the gold difference and allow the traditional mid laner to keep pace with the funneled carry. Gold funneling brought forth one of the most interesting meta shifts in League of Legends history. This strategy rewrote the norms that each role had in competitive play and brought teams to make uncharacteristic decisions. Sites such as seeing Reckless on Janna instead of a carry or having Faker support his rookie jungler in Blossom. This strategy also conveyed an evolution of the meta, where the public took note of supports that did not require much gold but still retained sufficient utility to be considered in pro play. Who knows if this strategy will ever return to the competitive world. If gold funneling ever comes back to the meta, Ride will definitely take note and fix it, even at the expense of carry junglers. My name is Kudo, and thank you for watching this episode of Off Meta. Feel free to like and subscribe for more on the history of the League of Legends professional scene. No, no, la partida se acaba ahora. Si matan, se acaba ahora. ¡Ojo! ¡Dios! ¡Ha matado a Kai'Sa! ¡Ha matado a Kai'Sa de una ultimate! No sé si había perdido algún punto de vida, pero creo que le ha hecho un all-in. Es lo que decíamos, el requiem mata a todo el mundo, no hace falta nada más.